hi guys hope you all doing well and in this video I'm going to talk about uh, configuring filtering what is declarative provisioning and I'll show you a demo of how you can check the current configuration of Azure AD connect default sync rules how you can check the attribute mapping and some of the more examples uh, related to attribute inclusion list so uh, just to give an overview attribute inclusion list is a list of attributes which are predefined as per object type so uh, when a user is getting queried from on-prem there are specific set of attributes which get queried for every user the same goes for group contact and devices so the list of predefined attributes is called attribute inclusion list before I go ahead and tell you about what declarative provisioning is let's take a step back uh, in a process of getting a normal user object synced from local Active Directory to Azure Active Directory what we know that the very first process that will happen it will be an import and in that a replica of that particular object will be created in the local AD connector space. Let's say I have a user who has a name ABC, department IT and mail learn at abc.com. In the very first import cycle, all these attributes with the user object will get imported and we'll see a replica in the local AD connector space. The next part is when the sync will run for this particular user object. That means when a sync will be initiated on your local AD connector this is the process wherein inbound sync rules comes comes into the picture now let's say I have created an inbound rule which says I don't want I don't want to sync department attribute for a particular user object so what will happen next that in the metaverse you will find the department of attribute not getting listed and the same information will be forwarded to your connector space as well as Azure AD. Now this condition that I have created that for a for an object that belongs to user class what I have to do is I don't have to sync department attribute these sort of conditions that you are going to implement with the sync rules is called a declarative provisioning. I will be sharing the article of Microsoft and I would request if you guys, if you guys can go through with, the, with that article and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach me. Now, the way we have inbound rules in the same way there are outbound rules as well. Now the question comes, what is the difference? The difference between inbound rules and outbound rules is that inbound rules are the changes that are coming from connector space to metaverse and outbound rules are the changes that needs to be replicated from metaverse to the respective connector spaces. Now, when you will check the default configuration, you will find inbound rules for your local AD as well as Azure AD connector and you will find outbound rules as well for your local AD as well as Azure AD connectors. Now the question comes why outbound rules for local AD connectors because there are some attributes which are written back to AD. Now there should be a process, there should be a method how the attribute should be written back to AD and these kind of process or methods are defined in outbound rule for your local AD. Now before this entire process gets completed there is a logical reference which you guys can think of uh, which I can say is a pipeline or it's a complete process which an object goes through every object be it group be it user and this particular process had six phase and those are source scope join transform precedence target now the information related to these six phases is something which is mentioned in the declarative provisioning public article of Microsoft. And again, you guys can go through and let me know if you have any questions. Though I will be explaining them very briefly now about each and every aspect, how it works and how the final resultant value of a user object is being sent to the cloud. 
Moving on to the next slide, wherein uh, the first thing that we need to do is check what is source. Now, let's say I have an inbound rule where I have defined object type as user so whenever you are creating any rule be it inbound and outbound you have to define the object type and the object type that you are defining is something which we call source and you will also get you'll also know or you, you'll also check that the source object type is the respective parameter which you have to select now let's say you have created five rules wherein you have mentioned source as user. So these five rules will be contributing all the attributes for, for the user object because source object type is selected as user. So whenever an object is synced, the source parameter is actually checked in the pipeline to apply the respective rules for that particular object. The next part is scope. Let's say you have five rules created wherein you have defined object type as a user. So this means that for user object, the scope is of five rules or vice versa. That means for these five rules, the scope is user. So source and scope, they are moreover interrelated to each other. That source is the object type and this depending upon that object type, how many rules should be applied to that particular object before it gets synced to the cloud. Moving on to the next part, which is really important and which is uh, what we call join. So let's say you have a account forest, a single forest, single Azure AD, sing simple topology, which is up and running, everything is in place. And you have a user object, user one with attribute ABC, which is getting synced without any issues. But now what you want to do is you have to add your resource forest. There could be N number of implementations of this join function, but I'm discussing in this video, a very common one, uh, which you come across on daily basis. So let's say you have exchange forest wherein the mailbox of users are provisioned. Now it's pretty much obvious that the forest which is having mailbox will certainly have different set of attributes which are not present by default because when we install exchange or when we configure exchange there is, is a schema extension that means different attributes get added to the current schema so that the attributes related to mailbox can be populated by the exchange service. Now, this user has attribute ABC, which is uh, synced to Azure Active Directory as it is. But now when for the same user, a disabled user object will come from exchange forest. Let's say it has two different attributes, which is D and E. When you will add this connector, the rules respectively for this particular connector will also get created and the inbound rules of this particular connector will update or will merge these attributes with the current image, which is there in the metaverse. Now, the very first thing that happens because of which the attributes are getting merged is the matching condition that you choose while adding or while configuring account and resource forest. So there will be an attribute which you have chosen or you might have gone ahead with the default configuration wherein there is a match condition configured. So when this object will be provisioned or uh, the, the process of provisioning this user object will get started, the rule itself will detect that there is already an object because of that matching condition and what will happen these two new attributes will be added to the same replica of the user object and then the resultant value will be sent to Azure Addy. This is how it will work in terms of join condition. So again join condition is to merge or is to update the current image which is already present in the metaverse with the new set of attributes. Now, we covered source, scope, 
join the next one is transform let's say you already have uh, an attribute on your on-prem which says department and I'm going to add some sort of transformation on that attribute is that I'm going to query department attribute but I'm not going to sync the department attribute as its name altogether so what do i mean by this that the value of department attribute is something that i'm syncing in extension attribute one so this is the transformation which is being checked once all the merge conditions once all the join condition is completed the next one is precedence this is one of the most important option which you need to take care before going ahead with making any changes to the current configuration or even adding new rules one simple example is that the the rule with the least precedence will contribute the attribute value now what do i mean by this that let's say i have one single user and with one single attribute a i have two rules the first one say that the value of attribute a should be one and it has a precedence hundred i have another rule for the same object for the same attribute which says that the value of attribute a should be two and the precedence is anything larger than or greater than 100 what will happen in this case that the for that particular user object the value of attribute a will always be one which is which will be synced to Azure AD because the precedence is low. So what is the fundamental behind this is that there could be n number of rules defining one single attribute value, but the final value which will be stamped will be taken by the rule which has the least precedence. When I'll be switching into my lab, I'll be showing you how you can check each and every attribute flow as well as the contributing rule on behalf of which rule a specific attribute value has been sent to Azure AD and the final one is the target target is again uh, the the object so let's say uh, you have uh, an object on-prem which is which has a source type of user the entire process should always get mapped to the user object in the connector space of your Azure AD. So source and target, they have, they are, uh, what should I say, the reference is same, they are defining object types, but they, they are different set of settings which can be implemented in terms of rules, in terms of sync rules, either outbound or inbound. Now, let me switch to my lab to show you more details on this. So when you will launch synchronization rule editor, you can find it here. Just click on start and then click on synchronization rule editor. So this is a different console uh, which, which happens or which in fact opens when you click on this. And as you can see that it has, or it is already listing the default rules which are created and from here you can apply filters to check different attributes depending upon the object type now the first tab that we see is direction is currently which has been selected is inbound that means all these rules that we see here they're actually contributing changes from local ad connector space to metaverse now let's say you want to check outbound rules what you can do is you can select here the direction outbound and now you will see all those rules which are changing or which are pushing the updation of attributes from metaverse to both the connector spaces let's go back to inbound here you see you see in from ad this means all these rules are contributing the value that needs to be changed from local AD connector space to metaverse and here you will see all those rules where are implementing the changes from Azure AD connector space to the metaverse the next option is metaverse object type now as you can see here we uh, we find an object or we find a reference as person because the user type object is mapped to the person object in your metaverse now 
to check more details about this what you can do is you can go to the sync tool and you can click on metaverse designer and what you will do is you will find the references of all the object types which are predefined so that you can make changes depending upon your requirement so there are basically four type of object types available person group devices and public folder now the question comes uh, that why these four because this is something which is uh, predefined settings of Azure AD Connect now let's go back to uh, the synchronization rule editor here you can see name connector local AD connector precedence very important piece as you can see that every rule has a different precedence so let's say you have two rules which are contributing one single attribute the rule that has least precedence according to that rule the value of an attribute will be stamped coming back uh, to the filtering uh, now we can see connector now what I'm going to see that all the rules that are defined for local AD connector space and that are pushing the changes to the person object should get listed now see these are the rules which are contributing to a person object in the metaverse now what you can do is you can click on any rule and then click on export and here you can see all the attribute mapping as in from where the uh, changes are being pulled and how these are stamped to the metaverse object so as you can see that source is on-prem and the attribute which is getting synced sam account name and the destination attribute to which the value will get stamped is the account name now what we can do is we can go to ad and we'll check here that sam account name is enter now i go to my local ad connector space and i will check how the SAM account name is getting listed for a user object. Let me apply the filter and navigate to that particular user. Enter. So what we will see here is that the attribute uh, which will be queried has the same name which is SAM account name and which is enter. But now once this value will be sent to metaverse the name of the attribute will get changed to account name see enter and you can see it uh, from here itself which rule is contributing this change it is in from ad user common so if we go here back the rule that we were checking was in from ad user common so in this way you can check all the rules as well as which rule is contributing what value and how the resultant value of a particular user object is being synced to Azure AD. This is an example of uh, the example that I was showing was specifically for inbound. In the similar way, what you can do is you can select outbound to check how the attributes are mapped. Now, in my next video, I'm going to show how to create custom rules and that will be the last video of this entire series depending upon these two series if you guys have any more questions that you think i can cover please do please feel free to reach me and i'll be happy to answer all of your queries thank you so much guys thanks for your time have a great day Bye bye